Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a candlestick chart. Candlestick charts are commonly used when you're doing stock analysis. For example, we have Apple stock here and we can see the candlestick chart looking at the highs and lows, the opens and close of the stock. This is a weekly basis of the Apple stock. One thing about candlestick charts is in this implementation of it, if you look at whether it's filled or not, you know when the open is lower than the close. So in this example, the first one, you can see the open is $72.36, the close is $74.36, and you can see it's a solid fill. So that indicates that it closed higher than it opened. Now, if you look at the week here of 228 down here, we can see that the open at 74.32 and it closed lower at 68.34 and that's why we have a hollow box. It's not filled in with the color. So that's something that gives you a sign when you're looking at these candlestick charts is if the close price is higher than the open price. Now I'll cover uh, the other components of the candlestick chart when we create this. So let's see how we can create a candlestick chart. Now, in this particular implementation of the candlestick chart, it's a little more dynamic. This is Apple stock. If I change it to something like Tesla stock, T-S-L-A, press enter, you notice that it dynamically goes out to the internet and looks for the open, high, low, and close, and volume here, but volume's not in the chart here. But it sees it, or it looks for it, and it charts it out for you. So I'll show you how to create something like this more closer to the end of the video. But I want to cover first how to create a candlestick chart in its most basic. So here I'm in sheet one, and I already got a candlestick chart, but let's delete this and start from scratch. So the reason why I have it laid out like this is because Google is pretty smart in terms of when you create your candlestick chart, it's going to look at your header fields and figure out if they match what Google is expecting. So that's why I named this low, open, close and high. And if we just had this, we can pretty much create a candlestick chart pretty easily. If I select that data and go under insert chart or go under this icon here and insert a chart, it's going to insert the candlestick chart for us already. So we have that kind of nicely for us because if I click on my three dots here and go to edit, you'll notice that it has picked it up pretty well. We've got our Data range, A1 to E2, A1 to E2 here, and it's picked up the other areas that we need to fill out this chart. Like the x-axis, is take that from name here, item 1, and it's taken out also the low values from low, that header, whoops, let's go back into the edit chart navigation pane here. It's picked out open from here, if you see open, we can see it's picked it out from the header here. It's picked out close. It's picked out, let's go down here a little bit. It's picked on close and it's picked on high, the header fields that we have put here. Let's say we try to create a pseudo box plot. Now, Google doesn't really have a box plot chart, but we can create a pseudo box plot without the median. So it's not really a box plot when you think about it. So this is our second quartile. And this would be our third quartile. Let's delete close and make this our third quartile. And we did the same thing here. We selected our range of data here. Let's add a new worksheet here. Click the plus sign and then paste values. We'll just paste the values. Hopefully it doesn't pick up the remnants of the other chart. So we just paste values only. So we have our range selected. Go to insert chart. And it's probably going to pick up the same chart because it figure out our low, our second quartile, third quartile, and high. So if we wanted to use the candlestick chart to create a box plot or a pseudo box plot, and it'd be a pseudo box plot because it doesn't really have a median indicator. Google used to have a add-on, and this is where you can add a box plot with the median but that's not available anymore. So um, that's why I would call this a pseudo box plot. It's not really a box plot when you really think about it. But 
if you want to create a box plot, you can use the candlestick chart to do that. Though, so let's get out of that and let's pretend that we're back in our candlestick chart and we're tracking stocks. So we have our open and we have our high and we have, oops, we have our open and we have our close. That's not high, it should be close. And we can do the other types of formatting for this to make it look nice and pretty, uh, like give it a title, give it a real title. So we customize the title and instead of having it say uh, this quartile thing, we can just say, uh, and we can just put stock, price, and we can change our title there. We can get rid of the grid lines. Let's see, we don't need any grid lines. And we can just make it look nice and go to edit, go back to edit. And instead of having that name there, and we can change our uh, title text for our axis titles of name. We can maybe call this items. And we see that's items. There's only one item there. And if we wanted to add more items there, then we would have Google instantly recognize that. If I put item two, let's just make some stuff up. Low is maybe two, open at five, close at six, and then high of nine. And that's gonna enter it there. So Google's really pretty smart in terms of recognizing when you add new data to your rows and appending that data into your chart. Now, let's see how we can create something like this where it's more dynamic. So using the candlestick chart in this way makes it a little bit more dynamic. And if you like to track stocks, you can use the candlestick chart to kind of tell you where the trend is for stuff. So let me open up a new worksheet. And in this worksheet, let's put a placeholder here for stock ticker. And then we'll just put uh, Apple as a placeholder, A-A-P-L. And here, we're gonna use a formula called Google Finance. So equal Google, Google Finance, click that. And it's gonna take uh, a couple arguments. First, the ticker symbol, which will highlight cell B1 here, and comma. The second thing we wanna do is the attribute. So the attribute is whether you want the price or volume or etc. So if I put price, let's say, for example, I just wanted the price, the price of the stock will give you. Uh, and if you look, if you learn more, you'll find out more information that you can add in this attribute argument. Um, let's do price for now, and I'll show you how we can change that later to get more information. So comma, the next thing is your start date. Let's say, for example, we went 1, 1, 2020. So we want it at the beginning of the year, and our end date, maybe we want it for the end of uh, November. So we do 11-30-2020, right? 20, no, not 29, 20, 20, 20. And we can either return the daily stock price or the weekly stock price. Uh, let's do daily for now, and I'll change it to weekly later on. But we're going to do it, and we have to put it in quotes. So it's daily in quotes, close quotes, close parentheses. And when I hit, hit enter, it's going to fill out a whole table from January 1st, 2020 to 11.30th, 2020. And you can see that Google goes out in the internet and gets that price for the Apple stock. Now, I didn't do that because I have an error. So let's look at our error. Let me see if I click on here. What does it tell me? Oh, I needed to put the dates in quotes. So if I put the dates in quotes, let's see if that works out for us. Open quote, close quote, and then for this date, open quote, close quote. Let's see if that worked. Whoops, let me delete that, put a comma there. Daily, there needs to be a, needs to be a quote there, and that needs to say daily. Press enter. And let's see if we get our, we got an error, formula parse error. Let's see what we have here. The quote, didn't close a quote here. Let me close the quote, make sure I have a comma, and then a close quote for daily. Let's delete this. Close quote for daily, open quote for daily, and Did that over again. Press enter, and let's see if it loads it. Now I think it's gonna load it, and we have our closing price for Apple. If we did Tesla, we have our closing price for Tesla. Now what we need to do 
is if we wanted to create a candlestick chart, we need more data. We don't just need, so I'll click here, we don't need the price. But if we click on something else, click on learn more, learn more, and we'll see that we have other options for that second argument instead of price. So if we scroll down here, if we click that, you can see that if we clicked on all, it will give us all the items above here, open, close, high, and low. And so we're going to change price to all. And that's going to give us what we need, those things, those attributes. Quote, all, close quote, period. Unfortunately, Google's not too friendly with this formula bar. And so let's click on here and see if we can change that. Let's close this. Let's see if we can change it here. It makes it, let's see if that makes it a little bit easier. One, I don't see my cursor, unfortunately. Let's see if we click in here and press one. Yeah, that gave us that. Slash one and click over here. Let's put the quote in here. Quote one one 2020. Open parentheses. Uh, unfortunately, Google is not too friendly here, so we need to probably start this over. And then I did 11 30 20, close quotes, comma, and then open quotes, weekly, close quotes, close parentheses, press enter. And now we're going to have our full table of what we need to create our candlestick chart. Close this. And all I need to do, let me click outside here because Google doesn't always pick up things correctly. Let's see if it did. Actually, let me click inside here and click on chart and go to the candlestick chart. Click on that. And it doesn't really pick up everything. So it sometimes it's smart and sometimes it's not smart. So we need to kind of fill this up in our values here. So the date range is correct, A3 to A51. If you scroll down here, it picked up to A51. It's not that much. So A51 is down here. Let's see, right there. That's fine. So it picked out the data range, right? And it picked out the date, fine. It picked up that header field, fine. It picked out the open here. And let's see, did it pick out the, no, it didn't pick it out right. So this is supposed to be low. So we're going to choose low here because our headers are worded correctly. And open should be this one, that particular header field. Close should be this one. Oops, let me go back to edit. Low, open. Close should be close, and then high should be high. So that's why it's kind of important to make sure that you name your fields correctly. And let's see if it picked it up. And click on aggregate, and we have our chart. Close this, right? And so we have our chart. And if I wanted to change this to something like Apple, it's going to dynamically pick that up. Let's go out to your internet and pick up the prices for that. So it's going to pick that up ki kind of nicely. If we wanted to make this a little bit more dynamic, what we can do is change some of the parameters here. So let's say, for example, that we wanted this not just to be hard-coded for January 1st, 2020 and 11 30, 2020 and make it weekly. We wanted to see this as anytime we click in this, maybe this is 2021, it would start from the beginning of the year to the current date. So what I can do here is for my second and third argument, make a little, make a couple changes. Delete that. What I want to do is use a function called date, open parentheses, and on the date, it's going to take three arguments, the year, month, and day. And so what I want is I want the year that of today. So I have to wrap another argument in here, and I'm going to take year and another argument today. So today, is it's going to bring back today's date. But that gets wrapped into year, so it's going to bring back the year of today's date. I'm going to close parentheses for that. And now the second argument of date is going to be the month. First month of the year, comma, the first day of that year. And now I will close parentheses and press comma. It's going to bring me back to the third argument that Google Finance wants and that's going to be the end date. So this second argument was the date as the start date. 
let's do the end date. Now let's make, just make that today. Today is going to be that function, open parentheses, close parentheses, and our last argument is, do I want a daily or weekly stock price? So let's just go daily. Open parentheses, I mean weekly. Weekly, open, open quotes, close quotes, close parentheses, press enter, and it's gonna go out to the internet and look for those prices of Apple stock for the weekly prices, open, high, low, close, and the volume. We're not using the volume, but it's just gonna bring that back there because we have all here. And so it's created that candlestick chart for us. And what's nice about this, uh, let's change this. I don't want like that title. Let's make this the chart title and we'll call that. Let me see if I can change the chart name. Go to chart title. Let's call it, let's put equal. Let's see if it lets me do B2. And no, it doesn't. So what we need to do, we'll just give it some generic name like candle stick chart and it will replace that press enter we've got our candlestick chart here close that and now if we wanted to add some dynamic nature to this chart if i change it to tesla press enter we'll have a candlestick chart for tesla if i change this to microsoft we will have a candlestick chart for microsoft and it charts all that data for us so that's the way that we can create a candlestick chart and make it a little bit more dynamic. If you had static data, all you need to do is just put it in this format and you can create your candlestick chart. And of course you can create your pseudo box plot. But if you wanted something a little bit more dynamic, this is the way that you can do it with a candlestick chart. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.